Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Nails one more time. Today we'll talk about cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, one of the restrictive lung diseases. We call it COP and sometimes we call it BOOP, which are two diseases combining together. Bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia or BOOP. With that being said, now let's get started. As you know, lung diseases are divided into obstructive and restrictive. Obstructive, I cannot get the air out. Restrictive, I cannot get the air in. Cryptogenic organizing pneumonia is a restrictive lung disease. Restrictive lung diseases are either extrinsic or intrinsic. Intrinsic is either diffuse parenchymal or non-parenchymal. Diffuse parenchymal is occupational or environmental or idiopathic interstitial or others. Cryptogenic organizing pneumonia bronchiolitis obliterans combination is here. All of the organizing pneumonias are here, and all of them have one thing in common. This one thing is chronic alveolitis. It could be due to an unknown etiology or known etiology. Unknown etiology such as cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. We call it crypto because it's hidden, because we do not know the cause. And doctors do not say, I don't know. They will say, it's idiopathic, it's cryptogenic. It's primary, it's essential. Just be honest and admit it, folks. This super sophistication is not helping anybody. If it's due to a known etiology, it could be due to drugs, toxins, immunodeficiency, MDS, rheumatological conditions, infections, or radiation. We call it post-radiation fibrosis. Drugs include amuterone and bleomycin, among others. Here are the drugs that lead to interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. Amiodarone, potassium channel blockers, let's review some pharmacology, which is a class 3 antiarrhythmic drug. We have four classes of antiarrhythmic. Class 1, sodium channel blockers. Class 2, beta blockers. Class 3, potassium channel blockers. And class 4 is the calcium channel blockers. Side effects of amiodarone, it has an insanely long half-life, toxic to the thyroid, liver, and lung. Check the TFTs, LFTs, and PFTs respectively, and of course it causes pulmonary fibrosis. Bleomycin, free radical formation, break the DNA, that's why it's an excellent chemotherapeutic, used in testicular cancer and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Remember Hodgkin's lymphoma, we use the ABVD regimen, B stands for bleomycin. This is in contrast with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma because in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma we use the R-CHOP regimen, not the ABVD. Side effects of bleomycin, interstitial fibrosis, skin changes, and mucositis. There is another drug that causes mucositis. If you say methotrexate, you're absolutely correct. Carbamazepine, sodium channel blocker, anti-epileptic drug also used in trigeminal neurology, also known as tic de which is a French name, which is amazing, bipolar disorder and acute dystonia, side effects, pulmonary fibrosis, diplopia, ataxia, SIADH, aplastic anemia, a granulocytosis, it's an inducer of the cytochrome P450 enzyme, and it's teratogenic, causing neural tube defects. Minocycline is a tetracycline, so it's a protein synthesis inhibitor. Is it the 30S or is it the 50S? It's the 30S. It is used against rickettsia, chlamydia, borrelia, mycoplasma, etc. Side effects, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, GI distress, bone and teeth discoloration, like kind of a yellowish discoloration, and photosensitivity. Nitrofurantoin is a protein synthesis inhibitor. It's an antibiotic used especially in urinary tract infection, especially in women during pregnancy, asymptomatic bacteria also during pregnancy, and in acute cystitis. Side effects, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, hemolysis in G6PD deficiency, liver disease, nausea. What are other drugs that cause hemolysis in G6PD deficiency? We have the anti-malarial drugs, we have the sulfur drugs, we have the nitrofurantoin, we have the, I don't know, the dapsone, whatever. But the most common cause of triggering hemolysis in G6PD deficiency is infections. It's not drugs. There are some other drugs that cause pulmonary fibrosis, such as sulfasalazine, penicillamine, and phenytoin. Here is a very common mistake by students. They say that this bleomycin, amiodarone, nitrofurantoin, etc. cause idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Wrong. If it's called idiopathic, we do not know the cause. So don't say, oh, these drugs cause idiopathic. If they cause it, it's not idiopathic. Just say interstitial pulmonary fibrosis and you'll be fine. If you don't want to say interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, at least say organizing pneumonia. What do you mean by organizing? I mean fibrosis. Oh, is this the organization? Yes, this is the kind of organization that pathologists love. There are two complications of hematopoietic stem cell transplant collectively are called BOOP. 
bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia. They occur more than three months after the transplant and these are the two diseases. Let's compare between them. Cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, which is today's topic, is a restrictive lung disease. Bronchiolitis obliterans has the word bronchiolitis, so it's an obstructive lung disease. Symptoms are the same, dyspnea and dry cough. Bronchiolitis obliterans is associated with CMV and graft versus host. Radiology, here you see diffuse fluffy infiltrates. This is the fibrosis. Here you see evidence of air trapping. This is the obstruction. Barrel-shaped chest, maybe you see bronchitis or infiltrates. Bronchoscopy with a biopsy. If it's a restrictive lung disease with fibrosis, you see granulation tissue within the alveolar space and small airways. Here the biopsy is not sensitive or specific. You see some collagen granulate, blah, blah, blah. And you see the small airways because it's bronchiolitis and they are obliterated, hence obliterans. How to treat cryptogenic organized pneumonia? Give steroids, entirely reversible with bronchiolitis obliterans. Give immunosuppressants, which are kind of the same as steroids. Cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, this is the same thing as idiopathic bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia. Combined together, we call them boop, and here is the poop emoji. Organizing pneumonia of unknown etiology, that's why we call it idiopathic. Bronchiolitis plus chronic alveolitis. Clinically, you find onset of cough, fever, shortness of breath, myalgia, malaise, takes weeks to months. Usually misdiagnosed at first and they fail antibiotics because they are not caused by a bacteria. Signs are tachypnea and ROLS, which is an old name. The name today is crackles. And there are different types of crackles. How to diagnose cryptogenic organizing pneumonia? Clinically, PFTs, you'll show restrictive. A gradient is prolonged. Why? Because the problem is in the lung. DLCO is low. Why? Because the problem is in the lung. ABG, you'll find short spread leading to respiratory alkalosis. Chest x-ray, bronchial thickening. It's called bronchiolitis obliterans. Interstitial marking, this is the fibrosis. Bilateral patchy markings of the alveoli, that's the alveolitis. I've told you that all of the organizing pneumonia have something in common and this one thing is chronic alveolitis on ct scan you'll see peripheral infiltrates that may coalesce leading to confluent infiltrates lung biopsy will show bronchioles have proliferation of fibrous tissue and immature bodies called mason bodies that's why we call it bronchiolitis obliterans Management is by immunosuppressants such as corticosteroids and cyclophosphamide. What is a famous yet horrible side effect of cyclophosphamide? It's hemorrhagic cystitis. Let's draw the trigone here and the two ureters. This is amazing. And the sphincter. Get your head out of your sphincter. Prognosis is good. Unlike idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis which has a poor prognosis. Clinical pearls for the pulmonologist. You should know two causes of SIADH related to your field of study. Number one, small cell lung cancer leading to this horrible paraneoplastic syndrome. And organizing pneumonia or interstitial fibrosis if it's due to carbamazepine. Carbamazepine will lead to interstitial fibrosis, also known as organized pneumonia. The same freaking carbazine will lead to SIADH, syndrome of inappropriate ADH. There is lots of ADH. You are reabsorbing free water like tons of it until your cells swell, including your brain cells. And you will have neurological symptoms, among others. Let's compare between idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and cryptogenic organized pneumonia. Okay, synonyms. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is the same thing as usual interstitial pneumonia. Cryptogenic organized pneumonia is the same thing as idiopathic bronchitis obliterans organized pneumonia or the boop. Etiology is unknown and known. That's why we call it idiopathic. That's why we call it cryptogenic. Onset. More insidious. Very, very, very slow. It takes more than six months. Cryptogenic organized pneumonia. Less insidious. Weeks. Maybe a few months. Clinically. Fever. Absent. Can you have fever here? Yes. The patient looks ah not so ill here acutely ill this has an itis guys itis so there's fever and the patient is acutely ill remember redness hotness swelling pain loss of function exactly radiology in interstitial pulmonary fibrosis you see interstitial diffuse infiltrates bilaterally and this is only interstitial but in cryptogenic organizing pneumonia they have interstitial plus chronic alveolitis so you see those infiltrates and they are not diffused they are patchy like this Prognosis is poor with the fibrosis. It's kind of good with the cryptogenic organized pneumonia. Excellent response to steroids. How about this one? In the beginning, they might respond to steroids or anti-fibrotic therapy. But at the end of the day, you have fibrosis and this fibrosis is irreversible. You cannot go back. Respond to steroids? Ah, okay. Depends. Okay. And 
only used in the stage one, not in the late stage where you have fibrosis. Steroid response in cryptogenic organizing pneumonia is pretty good. If you are struggling to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, check out this website called Picmonic. They have mnemonics for medical students, nursing students, dental students, pharmacy students, and check the link in the description below. They are not a sponsor of the video. Subscribe, hit the bell, and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get my Dropbox notes, which include the slides of this video, premium videos, cases, post notes, PDF notes, patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy, and study hard.